So a few videos ago I took a look at the third generation of video games, the generation that basically reinvented gaming. Well, it's time to continue our journey through time and take a look at the fourth generation. This generation consists of four consoles, the SNK Neo Geo, NEC Turbo Graphics 16, and the two big ones, the Sega Mega Drive or Genesis, depending on where you live, and the Super Nintendo Entertainment System or Super Famicom. I'm only covering the two big ones in this video, so if you came here for the other ones, go to Wikipedia or watch another video. And for clarity's sakes, I'll be calling them the Mega Drive and Super Nintendo. So after Sega flopped hard with the Master System, they needed a new way to compete with the NES. So they decided to make a more powerful 16-bit system. That way it had an advantage over the NES, which was only 8-bit. So they released the Sega Mega Drive in 1988 in Japan for 21,000 yen. Officially kicking off the fourth generation. Well, actually the Turbo Graphics did that, but we weren't gonna talk about those ones. Okay, but Sega released the Mega Drive on October 29th, 1988, but it was overshadowed by the release of Super Mario Bros. 3 a week earlier. Crazy how a game overshadowed a whole console. Well, to be honest, it was the late 80s and gaming was way less popular than it is today. Sega announced that they would release the console in January of 1989 for $190 in America and changed the name to the Sega Genesis. Apparently, it was due to a trademark dispute with Mega Drive Systems Inc, which was a computer hardware company at the time, which is why they couldn't name it the Mega Drive in North America. So they released the Mega Drive under the name Sega Genesis. Sega released the Mega Drive in Europe in September of 1990, which surprisingly ended up being the most sold 4th gen console here. Yeah, it surprised me as well. But besides Sega releasing the Mega Drive, Nintendo didn't felt the need to make a 16-bit system until Sega slowly started to dominate a few years after the launch. Nintendo started getting the need to make a 16-bit console as well. So in 1988, Hiroshi Yamauchi, Nintendo's president at the time, revealed that they were developing the Super Famicom and confirmed the development of Super Mario Bros. 4. It was released on November 21st, 1990 for 25,000 yen, together with Super Mario Bros. 4, renamed Super Mario World, and it was an instant success. The first shipment of 300,000 consoles was sold in hours. With the Super Famicom selling out so fast, Nintendo of course had plans to release it outside of Japan. So with the NES, they redesigned it smartly into a video cassette recorder. So now they redesigned it in... Honestly, I don't know what this is supposed to be. They named it the Super NES. And at August 23rd, 1991, Nintendo sold the Super Nintendo for $200 in North America. Following June, they also released it in Europe, but they surprisingly used the Japanese design for PAL territories. Well, in the end, it all was way too confusing on name and design changes that I just gave up completely. So, let's just jump right into the end. Well, despite not having talked about them, the SNK sold a total of 1.1 million consoles worldwide. See why I didn't talk about them? The TurboGrafx was less of a failure, selling 6.5 million, but Sega sold a total of 30 million consoles worldwide. But still, Nintendo dominated with a total of 49 million consoles. So, despite the Mega Drive doing fairly well, Nintendo still won this generation, and I'm sure that next generation, Nintendo doesn't piss off another company so that they can create their own console and be more successful than them. Right guys?